Hello everyone, my name is Carlos Morales. I run AI for Ambic. Along with the uh, silicon, of course, you get a, a lot of software. So we have, uh, we have versions of, of Apollo that have extremely low power uh, Bluetooth, and you get you know, a software stack for, with, the, with that. There's security, of course. Um, TurboSpot is a way of controlling dynamically your, your power utilization. So dropping, you know, going to 200 megahertz when you need it, dropping to 100 megahertz when you don't, specifically it's 192 that's like you know we we summer we we round up so i think it's 96 and and uh and uh, uh 192 or something like that um turning intervals on and off as you need them because we're all kind of uh power obsessed over here uh we have a a, a, a part of the stack that enables speech uis uh, we have a, a easy way to program our, our graphics, uh, very sophisticated graphics uh, processor. And then we have a library of neural network uh, helper functions that help you uh, get AI running on your chip quicker. That's all built on top of a common SDK. And the SDK abstracts all the, uh, or makes easy to use all the peripherals that we have on our SOC, uh, memory, RF, and so on. If you've been in Silicon Valley for a long time, especially if you've been in the semiconductor field, um, you've heard folks dabbling in, in sub-threshold before. It's easy to get working in a lab. Um, it's super hard to get it working in real world situations. So in the lab, you control temperature, you control power, you control everything, right? Um, in the real world, you're, you can't tell your user, hey, your watch is getting too warm, stay out, right? It has to work when you're running, when you're in the sun, when you're in the shade. It has to work when the battery is fully charged and when it's not. You know, those voltage variations have to be taken into account. Um, and, you know, you're printing thousands of parts on a, little, on, a, on a wafer. So making all of those parts run uh, equally well uh, in this domain is also difficult. Right, so so these are the problems that Ambic has solved and productized and as a way of productizing a sub threshold, and the payoff is to get that 16x better performance. What's driving the future wearables? It's practicality. You know, being able to do real things without impacting your your battery life, or or you know, extending your battery life and doing battery life and doing the old old stuff you were doing. Right, uh, having a sophisticated graphical. Uh, Capability, so you can actually do dazzling, pretty um, graphics on your on your wearables or on your your wall devices and so on. Having speech as an input, so you need good sensors, good audio uh, kind of converters, and you need sophisticated um, uh, compute behind that. Um, and then you you tie it all together into uh, multimodal models, models that are looking at different sensors. And you can start doing sophisticated things like fitness tracking, but also uh, seemingly simple things that are actually super hard to do, right? Fall detection. You don't want false positives or false you know, that Fall detection has to be one of those things that's super accurate. Um, lies depend on it. And it turns out that just looking at one source or another um, is not sufficient. So you need sophisticated compute, multiple sensors, and efficient ways of, of sampling those.